Croatia is a country not a lot of people have heard of until recent years where they would shock everyone in the World Cup by giving their all on the field and beating the unbeatable. In this video, I'll take you on a journey through Croatia's 2018 and 2022's World Cup performance. Croatia is a small country with a population of 3.9 million located next to the Adriatic Sea with rich culture, beautiful scenery and fierce love for sports. So how was such a small country able to achieve so much in World Cup? Well, let's take a quick look in the past, way back when Croatia was part of Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia was a country formed from now Croatia, Serbia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Montenegro, Macedonia and Slovenia. Yugoslavia always had good footballers, but the country would fall apart into previously mentioned countries during the war. All of these countries had love for football, but none were as successful as Croatia. And their first ever World Cup in 1998 would show just how good they actually are, earning them third place, making it one of the best debuts in history. Croatia might be small, but the feats it achieves are nothing to sneeze at. Underestimating the passion and the tenacity the team has would prove fatal, as you will soon see. To start off with the 2018 one, Croatia played versus Nigeria. Croatia's lineup was 4-2-3-1. It consisted of Subasic as goalkeeper, Versalko, Lovren, Vida and Sternic as defenders, Brozovic and Rakitic as midfielders, Kramaric, Modric and Perisic as attacking midfielders, and lastly Mandzukic as striker. The game would end in 2-0 for Croatia, and they would move on to their game with Argentina, resulting in 3-0 for Croatia. And the final game of the G group, they played versus Iceland, where they won 2-1. Their new opponent in the last 16 would be Denmark. In that game, Croatia would get scored on in the first two minutes. A very rough start that could have demoralized the players, but instead it kicked them into overdrive and not long after, they would score to equalize. This is one of those instances where you could see the Croatian tenacity and their refusal to give up. The game was intense, with Croatia having fierce attempts at the net but sadly missing. What instantly stands out is Perisic's shot that went straight to the ground. Nearing the end of the game, it looked like Croatia would take the win, with Modric's pass to Badet, who ran past the goalkeeper and was about to shoot, but he got tackled and Croatia earned the penalty. Luka Modric would shoot the penalty, but sadly it would be saved and the game would result in a penalty shootout, where Croatia would emerge victorious 3-2, and would move on to the quarterfinal against the host, Russia. Before we go further, I'd like to ask a favor. We're close to hitting 1000 subs and it would mean a lot if you could subscribe. <laughs> That's all from me now, back to the video. Similar to their game with Denmark, they would get scored on first and that would become a recurring thing for them. Because in every game they would get scored on first and then retaliate. Not long after the amazing cherish of goal, Kramaric would score a beautiful header and equalize the score. Russia would face a scary situation in front of their goal and it looked like the ball was all but guaranteed to hit the inside of the net. However, as luck would have it, Perisic would hit the post, ending the attack. As the game ended in 1-1, extra time would be added by the referee and during that extra time, Vida would score a header and Croatia would take the lead. But just 15 minutes later, Russia would equalize with a free kick. To say watching this game was nail-biting would be an understatement. Both teams have so much on the line, having played a full game plus extra time, with neither team having a lead for long. The stress was unbearable, and it was show on penalties. Russia scored 3, failed 2. Croatia scored 3, failed 1, meaning the last penalty shot by Rakitic would decide the match. And it goes in. Even if you don't watch football, you could tell that this match was great on both sides. 
Croatia would move on to semi-finals for the first time since 1998. They would face England in the semis, where, again, they would get scored on almost instantly. But what England didn't know is that, by this point, getting scored on just fueled the players to perform. It would take until the next half for Croatia to get comfortable and warm up, after Perisic would score a header to tie the match. They were starting to show better and better coordination and would begin attacking more effectively. Not even 10 minutes after scoring, Perisic would have a crazy shot that ran past two defenders and the goalkeeper, but would sadly hit the post. The game would go into overtime, where Mandzukic would score and take Croatia to finals for the first time ever. This was it, the finals. Croatia was facing an opponent that was the favorite to win it all. Can they pull a win despite all odds like they were at this whole tournament? Well, they started off strong. For the first 15 minutes, Croatia was harassing France. They were pressing the players, advancing towards the goal, and even had a handful attempts at net. However, none went did. France was probably shocked seeing this type of a performance from a team that no one ever heard of. But that would all change when the France attack resulted in a free kick that would lead up to a goal, making it 1-0. However, as it happened throughout the tournament, it wouldn't stop or demoralize Croatia. They pushed hard and just 10 minutes later they would equalize with a beautiful shot by Perisic. The joy wouldn't last long, however, as he would later touch the ball with his hand inside the penalty area, resulting in a penalty for France that they would inevitably score. It was devastating. Croatia wouldn't be able to even the score before halftime, making them even more uneasy as the pressure piled on. This would amplify even further when in the 60th minute of the game, Pogba scored for 3-1. France were starting to get a feel for the game, and the tables turned. They were the ones pushing and pressing Croatia, and that resulted in another goal just 5 minutes after, making it 4-1 for France. This sealed the fate of Croatia. Even though Croatia didn't win, they went against the odds, pushed hard and managed to do the impossible. Getting second place was a huge moment for the country, and everyone took note of Croatia. The year is 2022. World Cup is being held in Qatar, and Croatia is different. Rakitic, Mandzukic, Vesalko, Subasic, Vida, and many others weren't there. Most of them retired, some were benched, but it was clear Croatia changed. The question remained, was it for the better? First impressions were not so great. It felt like we missed that oomph that we had in the previous World Cup. They were more passive, almost felt like they were afraid to attack. It was to be expected, as their players are new and probably haven't had enough time nor experience with each other to flow naturally. Both teams had many opportunities but ended up not scoring any, and the game against Morocco would conclude 0-0. Second match would be against Canada. This was Canada's second time ever being in the World Cup. Could they catch Croatia's new team off guard and win the game? Well, it definitely seemed that way. In the first minute, Canada would score, leaving everyone in shock. Croatia wouldn't be able to score for the next 35 minutes, but Kramaric would find his way into the goal and even the score. This goal kicked Croatia into fight mode, and they would go on to score yet another goal only 10 minutes after by the split superstar Livaya. After this goal, Canada's fate was sealed as Croatian players started to put in the pressure leading to another two goals for the country and propelling them into the next match. Belgium was next on the list. 
Only 10 seconds in, Croatia had an amazing shot, but sadly it went just next to the post. It seemed like the last game woke them up, but that wasn't the case. They had a couple more attempts at the goal, but their performance was very bad. The defense was full of holes and Belgium took the opportunity. They had four insane opportunities to score, but Lukaku would fail all of them. This was nothing but luck for Croatia and a devastating misplay by Lukaku, who was noticeably frustrated at his poor performance. The game ended 0-0 and Croatia moved on due to luck. Their next opponent would be Japan. Usually this team is looked down upon as they never got past the group of 16. However, this time it would be different. They beat Germany and Spain and their spirits were high. They were what Croatia was in 2018. The underdogs fighting through impossible odds. Meanwhile, Croatia just came out of the game that felt undeserved. The pressure was rising. This would reach its peak when the game would go into penalties. Croatia's defender Dominik Livakovic showed great performance throughout the cup, but can he keep it up? The answer? Absolutely. The 27-year-old goalkeeper from Zadar was an obstacle that Japan simply couldn't overcome. Oh my god. He would save 3 out of 4 penalties and Croatia would move on, with Pashalev scoring the final penalty. Livakovic showed the world what he's capable of, and everyone would take note of that. However, the upcoming match was something Croatia couldn't take lightly. It was Brazil, the favorites to win the whole tourney. The time has come. Croatia was facing their biggest challenge yet in this World Cup. They had to pull themselves together and rise up to the challenge or lose it all. The game was intense, with Brazil having a couple of very good attempts, all being stopped by Lovakovic. Croatia wasn't taking this game lightly. They were applying pressure on Brazil and played more cohesive as a team. It would result in overtime as both teams just couldn't get a clean shot in. And then it would happen. 105th minute. With their last attack, Neymar would get past the Croatian wall and shake their neck. Being a goal down with only 15 minutes left would crush anyone's spirit, but not Croatia. They wouldn't let it end like this. They started playing even more aggressively, switching two defenders for attackers and going all in. This would pay off because only 5 minutes after Neymar's goal, Petkovic would score. This meant another penalty shootout. There is nothing to say that already hasn't been said. Absolutely beautiful performance from Livakovic and Croatian shooters. Croatia would move to semi-finals to face Argentina. As the team they beat 3-0 in the last World Cup, they made sure not to underestimate Croatia. This was evident from the first couple of seconds as Argentina was applying insane pressure, playing aggressively and dominating the game. Things started to fall apart for Croatia around the 30 minute mark. Alvarez was having a 1v1 one -one with Livakovic and as Livakovic came to intercept the ball, Alvarez would collide into him. It seemed like nothing special. The goal was defending and the attacker ran into him. But the referee would give penalty to Argentina and Messi would score, making it 1-0 to Argentina. This left the team in disarray. It felt like they were robbed and could do nothing about it. This inevitably affected their play, and just 7 minutes after the first goal, Alvarez would score another goal, making it 2-0. Croatia stood little chance. The miracle they needed was too great, and even though they always rise up to the challenge and never give in to despair, in this game they have. The game ended 3-0, and Croatian dream of winning the cup was shattered. Nonetheless, the cup was not over yet. Just like the opening group game, it was time to face Morocco. Just two minutes in, the outcome was fairly clear. Croatia was applying a lot of pressure and Morocco seemed to crumble under it, with their players making a lot of mistakes in the penal area. But it wouldn't turn out as easy as Croatia thought it would. Guardiol was scoring the sixth minute of the game, but Morocco would instantly retaliate, scoring their own header just two minutes after. But as the game went on, the difference would start to show. Morocco was a team that did an insanely impressive feat on this World Cup, but they ultimately lacked experience Croatia had. The game would end 2-1 for Croatia, placing them third in the World Cup. As being someone from Croatia, the last two World Cup performances were an absolute joy to witness. Sure, the 2022 one 
left a lot to be desired in terms of coordination, but it shows a promising new generation of players that are entering the scene, as our world famous stars like Modric, Magikic and others retire. Let me know how you feel about this year's World Cup and what you think about Croatia. I read all of the comments.